class 19, we're going to talk about linear functions and linear regression today. Um, make sure you have taken a few minutes to look over your quiz from last week, um, and then we're going to move on to the demo. All right. In 1989, 44% of a country's population was on a weight loss diet, and in 1997, 12% of that same country's population was on a weight loss diet. If we're going to measure time in years since 1987, I want to translate the given information into two points. So here's one piece of information, and there's another. And I'm going to translate them into points. Measuring time in years since 1987, 1989 would represent the two years since 1987. So we're going to have 2 comma 44. And then my next one, 1997, that's 10 years later, so we have a 10, 12. Find the slope of the line passing through these two points. So remember, in general, slope is change in y over change in x. So you subtract the y coordinates, 44 minus 12, over the x coordinates, 2 minus 10. 44 minus 12 is 32. 2 minus 10 is negative 8. 32 divided by negative 8 is negative 4. And we could always write that as over 1 because that might help us in this interpretation part of the question that comes next. Okay, interpret the slope as a rate of change in the context of this story. Be sure to give the units. So the slope was a change in y over a change in x. So we have a decrease, that negative sign means a decrease in y for every one increase in x. And y was the percent of the country on a diet, and x was time in years since 1987. So our interpretation is going to be each year after 1987, the percentage of the country on a diet decreases by 4%. Okay, so one quick comment. Um, if when you have, Whenever you have a negative slope, we tend to interpret that as a decrease. Um, and so you don't ever want to use both the word decrease and a negative. So you wouldn't say decreases by negative 4%. It's like using a double negative um, in an English sentence. So you'd either say decreases by 4% or is changing at a rate of negative 4%. All right, so I want to find the slope-intercept form of the equation of the line. Um, so I now know it's slope. So if I'm looking at y equals mx plus b as the slope-intercept form of the line, I can replace the m with a negative 4. And all, the only piece of information I still need to find is b. y and x stay in the equation. So I just have to figure out what b is. And I can figure out what b is by using one of the points that I was initially given. You can pick any point um, that's on the line. I'm going to use 10, 12. So 10 was for 1997, 12% of the population is on a diet. So 10 comma 12, so the x coordinate is 10, so I'm going to put that in for x. So I have negative 4 times 10 plus b has to be 12. So I replace the x, co x with the x coordinate of a point and y with the y coordinate of a point. And when I solve for b, I get 52. So I'm not quite done. I have to write down the final equation of the line where now I replace the m with a negative 4 and the b with a 52. So I have y equals negative 4x plus 52. Okay, so the significance of the y-intercept in the context of the story, the y-intercept is 52, or 0, comma 52, if you want to give both coordinates of the point. So that says that when x is 0, y is 52. 
and X represented years since 1987. So this says that in 1987, 52 percent of the population was on a diet. Okay, so now I want to find the point slope form of the equation of the line that models the percentage of adults on diets y x years after 1987. Alright, so I've written the point slope form down here. All I need to do is replace the m with a negative 4, because I already calculated that, and x1 and y1 with any two points on the line. So I'm going to use 10, 12 again. So I just start copying this down, y minus y1 is m times x minus x1. Replace the m with a negative 4. And then I have to replace x1 and y1 with a point. And I'm going to use 10, 12. So I'm going to replace x1 with the x-coordinate of my point and y1 with the y-coordinate of my point. So that is called the point-slope equation of the line. Okay, I'm going to start with um, the equation from part f, which was y minus 12 is negative 4 times x minus 10. And I'm just going to try to get the y by itself. I'm going to distribute that negative 4, add 12 to both sides, and I get y equals, when I distribute that negative 4, I get negative 4x. Negative 4 times 10 is positive 40, and then add 12 to both sides, and I get plus 52. So I get the exact same equation um, as I did when I wrote this in slope-intercept form. All right, so now I want to use that slope-intercept equation to predict the percentage of adults on a diet in the year 2000. So the year 2000 is 13 years after 1987. Okay, so I'm going to replace my x with a 13. And 13 times 4 is 52, so I have negative 52 plus 52, which is 0. Okay, so 0% 0 of the adults in this country were on a diet in the year 2000. In what year was 50% of the country's population on a weight loss diet? So in this case, 50%, that's a Y. So I have to replace the Y with a 50. Negative 4X plus and then I just want to solve for the x. So I have subtract 52 from both sides, divide both sides by negative 4, and you get x equals 1 half, which means it was still 1987, a half a year later. Mid-1987. If we assume that the percentage of adults on a diet declined by precisely 4% each year, then the scatter plot of the data would look like this, right? So my percentages would go 52, 48, 44, 40, 36. They'd go down by exactly 4% every year. And all of my points would lie perfectly on a straight line, the line we found, y equals negative 4x plus 52. Every point of data that I had would go right through. That line would go right through it. But in reality, when we're modeling real-world variables, we get data and a scatter plot that looks more like this picture right here. In this case, the data don't all fall along the same line. However, the data do seem to fall all near the same line, even if it's not perfect. Okay, so here's my real-world data with a line drawn through the two data points that we started with, 244 and 1012. So this one right here and 1012, this one right here, I connected those two points with a line. Looks like a pretty good fit, but those points were chosen arbitrarily, and if you chose a different set of two points, you could get any of these lines from the picture number six. Right? So how do we decide which one is the best one? 
For now, we're just going to let a calculator or computer tell us which line is the best. If you take a statistics or calculus course, you'll be able to figure this out by hand on your own. Um, the equation of the best fit line or the regression line graphed below is y equals negative 4.3x plus 53.95. Pretty close to what we came up with using two points, but it's a little bit different. A number called a correlation coefficient measures how well the best fit line or regression line fits the data. The correlation coefficient is a number between negative 1 and 1. We call it R. And here's a little summary of what the different values of R can tell you. When R is equal to positive 1, that means a perfect linear fit and positive slope. When r is negative 1, perfect linear fit, but negative slope. An r between 0 and 1, a positive r value between 0 and 1, means a positive correlation. As the x values increase, so do the y values, but the fit is not exact. And then alternatively, when there's a negative correlation, your r value comes out as a negative number between negative 1 and 0. And as the x values increase, the y values decrease, and the fit, again, is not exact. And when, if r equals 0, that means there's no correlation. The data has no tendency towards being linear, and your scatter plot just looks like a random mess of points um, and cannot really be used for prediction. So that does it for our demo for today. Um, you can get started on the class activities. The very last problem in the class activities you can skip um, unless you're interested in learning how to use your graphing calculator or GeoGebra to perform linear regression. As always, the answers to the class activities are immediately after the activities.